east africa was forged by some of the most violent activity this planet has ever experienced of the thousands of volcanoes that attended its birth only one is still active and it is called lengai but today a new lengai looks out over the east african scene as fiery and spectacular as any volcano, this Lengai is something else again. made more than a thousand flights over East Africa, over its great herds of game, its forests, lakes, and mountains. of a safari by balloon. One of the most beautiful places in East Africa is Lake Naivasha. And it's here that Len Guy's journey begins. Among the many inhabitants of the lake shore are Joan and Alan Root. They are wildlife filmmakers. And when not on safari, they live here in their own private paradise. Some of their animal friends, like Sally the hippo and this otter, are orphans that have ended up in Joan's care. Others are wild creatures that have come to trust the roots. Most of their animals are unusual, striped hyenas and porcupines. One is so unusual that it's almost unbelievable. This is an aardvark, an African anteater. But the roots are filmmakers, and for much of the year they must leave this family behind and camp out in the bush. In contrast to his gentleness with animals, Alan Root has a demonic approach to life and lives it to the fullest. Despite his high living and low flying, he is intensely serious about his work and has produced some of the finest and most sensitive wildlife films ever made. He is always looking for a new way of seeing things, particularly from the air, the element he loves best. In general, airplanes are too fast and helicopters too noisy for filming animals. Hi. 
Here he has been testing out a camera clamped onto the strut, but it's only useful for general aerial views. Twelve years earlier, Allen had flown in the hydrogen balloon Jambo on her pioneering flights in Africa and was impressed by her smooth, quiet, but very expensive flight. The new hot air balloons, however, were apparently easy to operate and cheap to run. On his next trip to England, Allen arranged for a demonstration flight. And before he was six feet off the ground, he had bought one. What me about this whole thing is the fact that we're... Next, he had to learn to fly it. So the English balloonist Phil Dunnington came to spend his leave at Naivasha to give Alan instruction. Phil had been to Africa before, but never do anything quite like this. And it does affect the performance of the balloon, but I think with one this size, we should be all right. Over lunch, he explained how they would go about inflating the balloon early next morning. We can run through it and tell us what we do, mm -hmm. how we shot. So once we've got the sight, we can spread the balloon out. Downwind in this direction. stage where we're using the burner to put hot air in and the balloon is beginning to be fully inflated this is a tricky period and when the crew on the crown rope need to be on the wall to let the top of the balloon up very slowly yeah. and gradually so that it rises fully inflated into the vertical position and gradually we fill the balloon up with more hot air until it's what we call in equilibrium where it's just ready to leave the ground and all you need to do is put a few more squirts in and you're away. That's when we open the champagne, right? Fantastic. <coughs> oh. the new balloon. Yes, sir. God, oh, this is unbelievably beautiful. This is going to be fantastic. Look, you can see all the, the hippo trails where they've come in and out of the water. Oh, yes. And you can see the mud stirred up over there where there's obviously been one walking around this morning. Yeah, well, the thing you've got to remember about a balloon is that it's got four tons of air inside it, four tons of inertia. So it takes some stopping, and you've got to anticipate its movements, particularly if you're going down. Yeah. Start rounding out well before you actually get to the point at which you want to round out. We and But there is no immediate response to the controls. Flying a balloon takes a bit of getting used to. More
challenge will continue in a moment on the Discovery Channel. Roger Kennedy's Rediscovering America explores the legend and mystique of the real American cowboy. Monday at 8 Eastern, only on the Discovery Channel. in America sells more office supplies for less than Office Depot. Nobody. So Air Miles is going to fly me free? <laughs> How generous. What's the catch? So I get these miles on just about anything? Anything. I didn't see a car. So what's the catch? So what's the catch? Art historians will tell you it isn't unusual for a masterpiece to have been painted directly on top of another equally impressive painting, which itself was often painted on top of a third. This masterpiece, however, is the result of an exclusive 23-step paint process, the Acura Legend. Our intention was not merely to create a thing of beauty, but to create one that will stand the test of time. Samsonite's Adventure Series luggage is perfect for those active vacations. It's sporty, easy to carry, and like every Samsonite, quite durable the adventure series for all you can pack into a vacation the spirit of fight lifting you skyward as we examine the very latest in aviation and look back to the planes and pioneers that took the world by storm it's an all-new season this fall only on the discovery channel too hungry to think can't tell who delivers one number does it all. Call the delivery food line in 818-545-FOOD. There's no charge to call. Simply enter your zip code and you can be call forwarded to the restaurant you select or receive the restaurant's menu over your fax machine. So call the delivery food line from your home or office. That's 545-FOOD in 818-774-FOOD in 213 and 645-FOOD in 310. One call does it all and it's free. Dad's gonna love it. It looks great. I can't believe Fast Frame got it done so quickly. Yeah, Mom helped me pick everything out yesterday. And Fast Frame had it ready this morning. They laid it out for us and helped us design it. Okay, he's opening it now. Oh, I love it. You know, I've been meaning to have this done for the longest time. <laughs> now, $49 custom poster framing at 11 San Fernando Valley Fast Frame locations. We now return to Challenge on the Discovery Channel. With ballooning, you never have the faintest idea where or how your flight is going to end. We took off from exactly the same place each morning, but one day we'd land way out in the sticks and have to wait hours to be recovered. The next day we might land in the middle of an African village and have hundreds of willing but completely disorganized hands to help us pack up.
was the lake that attracted me most. I must have been doing about 15 miles an hour, I guess, when I hit, and the effect was rather like dipping a bucket over the side of a fast-moving boat. The basket scooped itself full of water, became a great sea anchor, and the wind blew the balloon over to such an angle that there was no way we were going to get it up again. At the speed we were dragging, there was a real danger of one of us getting caught up among the wires. The only thing to do was to open up the rip panel and let the balloon collapse. At least then it would stop dragging us along. I don't know about Phil as an instructor. For some reason, he'd never sunk a balloon before, and there was nothing about underwater ballooning in the book. So, when help finally arrived, we had to work out our own salvage techniques. <coughs> Except where it was held up by trapped air, the balloon sank very quickly, and only a half-empty gas cylinder kept the basket afloat. But just as trapped air was keeping part of the balloon up, trapped water was keeping most of it down. We're never going to get it up like this. We'd obviously enclosed tons of water down there. We could bail the boat all right, but there was only one way to let water out of the balloon. the occasional mishap, the lake was a good place for ballooning. As Alan became a more proficient pilot, they were able to risk taking cameras up with them. And it was encouraging to discover that birds anyway were not too disturbed by the balloon. With any luck, it would be the same when he drifted over larger animals. Lake Naivasha is not just beautiful, it is also teeming with aquatic life. The undersides of the lily pads are home to millions of freshwater crayfish. The balloon proved to be an excellent means not only of catching them, but of cooking them too. Oh, Phil, breakfast ready? Great. This is going to be hot. Are we gonna... There you go. Mm. Now watch your fingers. You go. Phil's leave was over now. Alan had passed his tests and gotten his balloon license, so there was no longer any excuse to fly just for fun. The time had come to take Len Guy on safari, to test it over wild animals and see if it really did work. Their first destination was the Mara Game Reserve, just 150 miles away. Alan's Kenyan assistants Michael Nguri and Jeffrey Kamau carried enough gas for 20 flights, and Giles Camplin and Mike Price went along as recovery crew. The balloon can only be launched from a sheltered spot, so their camp had to be near some big trees. But shady spots are usually already occupied in Africa. The next morning, we still had company. I thought they'd take off as soon as I burned. But these old bull buffalo have lived for so long in this patch of forest that they weren't going to move out for anything. One of them became so blasé 
that we started calling him the airport manager. He watched every takeoff, and he was the first large animal that we photographed from the balloon. But it wasn't until we were actually flying over that beautiful Mara country that I found I'd made a very fundamental mistake. It wasn't me that needed the balloon license, it was Joan. I'm the photographer in the family, and whenever I wanted to film something, I had to hand over control to Joan. In other words, I ended up trying to give her flying lessons while looking through the viewfinder. And we'd often get situations where, because I was filming, I assumed Joan must be piloting. It'd go something like this. Oh, honey, I thought you were flying this thing. Well, no, you didn't tell me to. But can't you see I'm filming? I'm sorry, I didn't notice. I was taking stills. Okay, well, look, get down in the basket. These are thorny bushes. Hang on, here we go. How am I meant to know I'm in charge if you don't tell me? I don't know. Um, I tell you what, if you hear the camera running, it means you're in command, okay? Okay. But Joan soon got the feel of it, and we started to get results. The big herds of buffalo were rather nervous, but then they usually are. A herd's always as shy as its most nervous member. This old bull was more relaxed. He could decide for himself when to run. Each animal had its own reaction to Lengai. Most weren't bothered by the balloon, but didn't like the sound of the burner. Others just didn't like the shadow. things in the air, our recovery crew had a lot to learn on the ground. Mike and Giles have done this sort of thing for balloonists all over England and Europe. Over there they try and figure which road will cross the balloon's path. In Africa they could follow in a straight line and hope that not too much would get in their way. Hello Giles, I've crossed that small stream, the one with the swamp at the top end. We're right there, do you know how deep it is? Well no, but it can't be very deep. Why don't you get out and wait through it first? <clears throat> I think we'll just go around the top end. Oh. Then one day I gave him a real problem. Just as we reached the edge of a large area of forest, I got carried away filming a herd of wildebeest. And that's literally carried away, because by the time I'd got my shot, the wind had carried us over the trees. We flew on for a while, but the forest was miles across, and we didn't have enough gas to reach open country. The people on the ground couldn't get to us if we landed in the forest, so there was only one thing we could do. Land among the trees, but as close as possible to the Mara River. Mike and Giles, with any luck, could then come downstream and collect us in the rubber boat. The recovery crew picked up the boat from camp and got to the river as soon as they could. By this time, Joan and Alan Root had packed up the balloon and were bringing it laboriously to the riverbank. Okay, let's get back in. The Mara River winds through some of the most exciting country in Africa. For the most part, the river is deep and slow moving. But in places, it tumbles through rocky defiles and steep rapids. Among their many strange accomplishments, Giles Camplin and Mike Price have completely circumnavigated the British Isles. A mile away they were at home on water, and Michael Nagori would go with them to cope with any animals they met. But it was with some trepidation that they set out down the Mara. Giles, can you read us? Africa lived up to their expectations, and after just a couple of miles, these seasoned sailors smashed the propeller in a rapid. It wasn't until late afternoon that they paddled their way to their rendezvous with the roots. Ready? Yeah. Don't pull it around the end. Flip it up over that. Yeah. Go down the top. The next morning, heavily laden, everybody set off downriver. 
In many ways, it was like ballooning, a slow, silent, barely controllable movement in a plump, inflated craft. And the animals' reactions to it were as varied as their reactions to the balloon. approached the next group of rapids, they heard excited zebra calls, and ahead of them, a large group was crossing. These animals were the forerunners of the herds of zebra and wildebeest that migrate into the Mara every year from the Serengeti. They'd chosen a shallow place to cross, but the footing was treacherous, and many were swept away. It was the slower stretches of river that for Mike and Giles, made it quite different from anything they had seen around the British Isles. one of the rear tubes as well. That's okay, these are just holes in the floor and we've lost one compartment, right? We'll never get all this water out there. We're gonna sink really deep in the water. The rest of the trip down to the waiting vehicles was comparatively uneventful, just wet. But nothing had been lost or damaged. Challenge will continue in a moment on the Discovery Channel. Coming up next, share the dream to fly like the wind on Frontiers of Flight. Storyboard Express wasn't saving what they'd hoped since leaving AT&T. Party Help is Catering was having trouble getting faxes through on the first try. So like thousands of other businesses, they've come back to AT&T. And we want you back. Switch now and we'll give you credit for one month of long distance. And we'll pay to switch you back if you're not completely satisfied. We want you back. Call 1-800-222-0400. From the director of Alien, Blade Runner, and Thelma and Louise, comes a voyage beyond the horizon and the truth behind the adventure of 1492. New world is a disaster. Gerard Depardieu, Amanda Sante, and Sigourney Weaver in a Ridley Scott film. 1492, Conquest of Paradise, rated PG-13. Starts Friday, October 9th at theaters everywhere. You are here. She has a traveler's checks here. Nah, that's no good. But this is new American Express traveler's checks for two. The first checks either of you can use. Don't leave home without them. Is stripping old paint a pain in the elbow? Well, now you can power off old paint, stain, varnish, even rust with Easy Stripper. It literally eats old paint. Forget messy chemicals or changing sheets of sandpaper. Easy Stripper strips window frames and powers paint off siding. It's gentle enough to remove old varnish, yet it chews up thick, scaly rust in seconds. Yes, Easy Stripper powers off old paint and rust on contact. But there's more. Here's the driver. Now you can power in any screw in seconds. Monster screws like this or tiny screws like this. Even screws above your head. Yes, when you order Easy Stripper to power off paint and rust, you also get the driver to power in any screw. Both tools for an incredible $19.95. Order now. For rush delivery, call 1-800-733-3800 or send $19.95 plus $5.95 shipping to Easy Stripper Plus, P.O. Box 1321, Department 130, Fenton, Missouri, 63026 for your Easy Stripper and driver. Order now, 1-800-733-3800. They ruled our planet for 150 million years, then mysteriously disappeared. 
Now join the largest dinosaur hunt in history as scientists from Canada and China travel to the searing Gobi Desert, the Badlands of Alberta, and Canada's high Arctic in search of these primordial giants, in search of answers, in search of the dragon. Sunday beginning at 9 Eastern, only on Discovery Sunday. They're cute, cuddly, and dangerously unpredictable. Travel north to the Arctic Circle for the adventure of a lifetime. Dwarfed by mountainous glaciers, working in sub-zero temperatures, one family attempts to befriend the Arctic's most fearsome scavenger. Don't miss their incredible Arctic Odyssey on Challenge. Next Saturday at 8 Eastern, only on the Discovery Channel. We now return to Challenge on the Discovery Channel. The next few flights were made on behalf of the local Maasai game warden. He'd been very helpful to the Roots, and his brother was at that time the area's candidate in Kenya's parliamentary elections. Alan offered to carry his campaign posters on the basket and make some flights outside the reserve over the Maasai villages. Len Guy was a great attraction in a land where conventional campaigning is difficult to say the least. The lives of the Maasai are circumscribed by the needs of their cattle and the changing seasons, so there is little to disturb the pastoral pace of life. Small wonder, then, that they would desert their village if the 120-foot-high balloon came in to land over their houses. Strangely, although none of the Maasai knew about balloons, they'd all heard about parachutes, and Len Guy, they thought, must be one. When they saw that the roots had actually survived the landing, they would rush up with their congratulations. <laughs> Maasai people would come from miles around. The warriors suitably aloof. The women excited by the fabric and the wicker basket. The children into everything. When people vote in Kenya, they put their mark next to a symbol. Appropriately, the candidate symbol was a lantern. was the finale for the campaign. Then the route set out for the wide plains of the game reserve. been a success over the open Mara country. Alan wanted to try it over more rugged terrain. And as the warden's brother had by this time been elected with a big majority, it seemed a good time to move on. But then disaster struck the safari. You guys notice any fabric back there? The trailer tailboard had fallen open and the envelope had spilled out onto the track, only to be torn to shreds in seconds. There was nothing worth salvaging, and nothing else to do except curse, pick up about 5,000 pieces, and send away for a new balloon. Six weeks later, it arrived, and the safari was on the road again. 
Their destination this time was Tsavo, an immense area noted for its harsh mixture of granite hills and raw lava flows that look as though they had scarcely cooled. Tsavo is also noted for its big herds of elephants, and in particular, its great tuskers. It was elephants that drew the roots to what was otherwise a rather unsuitable piece of country. For in addition to the terrain, there were strong winds at times, and the whole place was clothed in very unfriendly vegetation. On their first morning, they tested the winds for strength and direction. The results were fairly conclusive. Only a superstitious fool would have seen any kind of omen in all that. Next day, the new Len Guy took to the air. On that first flight, we climbed to 5,000 feet to get a good look around. At times, we felt we were in a space capsule, tracking over the surface of the moon. Lava. We could clearly see where each lava flow had started, where it had gushed from the ground and crept across the country. And we could see all the trails that led up onto the lava flow from the surrounding bush. These trails are first made by elephant, whose weight crushes the lava, producing something like a coarse gravel path. Strangely, there's a lot of vegetation up on the flows. And in the dry season, other animals follow the elephant paths to look for food. I did with a two, with a two inch, not too bad. And you can really see how, you know, it's nice to have that, because all the other animals we've got on the lava have been sort of stumbling with it. So, we only get them around the edge of these flows. And there are even some species, like the clip springer, that happily live full time among these rocks. At the base of one of the lava flows is a crystal clear spring called Mazima. Joan and I made a film there once, and we've spent many happy hours diving with the hippos, so this was an entirely new angle on them. There was even one of our old friends on the shore for us. Try not to do that. But the real surprise was to find such large numbers of rhino living in the lava flows. And most of them were quite unconcerned by the balloon. Not long after the roots flight over Tsavo, yeah. many of the rhinos were killed by poachers. Even the remoteness of the lava flows could not save them. This one probably died of natural causes. It was the end of the dry season, and it may have simply starved to death. The vultures had been at it, but it still had its horn. So after Alan had landed, he walked back to confiscate it on behalf of the park authorities. A horn like this is worth more than its weight in gold and finds a ready market in the Middle East for dagger handles and in the Far East as a prized but ineffective aphrodisiac. It is the illegal trade in rhino horn that has more than any other factor brought the black rhinoceros of Africa almost to the point of extinction. A site like this may soon be a thing of the past. This hostile landscape alone isn't protection enough. It isn't the best country for ballooning either, as Alan Root discovered. To save wrecking the cars, we'd try and land as near as we could to a road. But that's easier said than done. And this is one of the few times that we came down within reach of the recovery crew. Okay, it should be a nice, gentle landing. Yeah. We'll cross the road and land on the other side. Hello! Hello! I'll rip as we come in. I'll just try and get beyond this lot.
We learnt a lot in Salvo, and the balloon let us look at life among those lava flows that wouldn't have been possible in any other way. We hadn't found large herds of elephants because the dry season had scattered them, but the place had lived up to its tough reputation. Challenge will continue in a moment on the Discovery Channel. This portion of Discovery is brought to you in part by Acura Automobiles. Some automakers would have you believe that total isolation from the road is the ultimate luxury. But the Acura legend was designed for a very different type of driver. One who believes that if a luxury car completely isolates you from the driving experience, it isn't really a driving experience. America sells more office supplies for less than Office Depot. Nobody. Calcrew Painting wasn't saving what they'd hoped since leaving AT&T. Schoenstein Pipe Organ Builders was having trouble getting long-distance calls through on the first try. So like thousands of other businesses, they've come back to AT&T. And we want you back. Switch now and we'll give you credit for one month of long distance. And we'll pay to switch you back if you're not completely satisfied. We want you back. Call 1-800-222-0400. Sure. With air miles, I just buy the things I need, right? Like yesterday's newspapers. See, normally I buy beer. And go to the movies. And call my mother. Love you, Mom. So what's the catch? I knew there was something. Hey, I'm going to Hawaii. They're cute, cuddly, and dangerously unpredictable. Travel north to the Arctic Circle for the adventure of a lifetime. Dwarfed by mountainous glaciers, working in sub-zero temperatures, one family attempts to befriend the Arctic's most fearsome scavenger. Don't miss their incredible Arctic Odyssey on Challenge. Next Saturday at 8 Eastern, only on the Discovery Channel. It began as a dream. Sun-drenched skylights, cool blue fountains, and majestic palms. Valencia Town Center with exciting shops. May Company, J.C. Penney, and Sears. And now, the cat's out of the bag. It's Valencia Town Center's grand opening. A dream come true. Discover the fun. Even a carousel with lions and tigers. Oh, my. Valencia Town Center. It's even more than you expected. It's the Dodge Factory Authorized Clearance. Get up to $1,900 total savings on Shadow. Get up to $2,175 total savings on a roomy spirit. Hefty savings on Dakota, too. Plus, get a thousand cash back and air at no extra charge on Caravan. See the Dodge dealer nearest you for the new Dodge you'll want to put in your garage. We now return to Challenge on the Discovery Channel. Ambicelli is a game reserve just north of Kilimanjaro, Africa's highest mountain. It seemed tailor-made for ballooning with plenty of wildlife and large open areas ideal for landing. Ambicelli is also a microcosm of most of the problems facing wildlife conservation today and the balloon provides a perfect way of looking at them. The first problem is a natural one. Ambicelli gets only about 10 inches of rain a year. The area is an ancient lake bed, and the soil, a fine alkaline dust that is swept up by the slightest wind and blown away.
the dusty plain is veined with narrow green swamps where springs fed by Kilimanjaro's snows and glaciers pump in the lifeblood that keeps the place green through the dry season. These dense reed beds are the last refuge of the Amboseli herds. Without them, the place would die. Periodically, the water table that backs up these swamps rises too high, and dissolved salts then kill the spectacular yellow-barked acacias, which are such a notable feature of Amboseli. Dead forests litter the landscape, robbing the earth of shade, animals of food, and the area of much of its beauty. In these desiccated conditions, it is hard for young trees to get started again. In some areas, new acacia forests are growing up, but not nearly enough to replace the losses. But these are natural problems. Amboseli has many more that are man-made. As soon as a wild area is made a protected reserve, it needs people to protect it. Then, in order to justify its existence, it must attract more people to enjoy it. The facilities for all these people sprawl everywhere. Amboseli is a sad example of tourism relentlessly destroying the very attractions that brought the tourists in the first place. Visitors come in the thousands, and their vehicles go everywhere, churning up the powdery soil, destroying vegetation, searching out animals in even the thickest cover leaving them nowhere to hide. Except for the swamps, the only parts of Amboseli that vehicles cannot reach are those covered with a litter of volcanic rocks. These areas can be visited only by animals or by men on foot. I think I can see something up there. As tourists are not allowed to leave the safety of their vehicles, a man on foot here normally means the Maasai. There's spears splinting in the sun. Are they coming this way? Yes, they're coming down the hill. Great. Well, maybe, well, at least they can tell us the quickest way out of here. I don't know how Mike and Giles are going to get here. Hello. The Maasai are the traditional owners of Amboseli. They have always been very tolerant of wild animals and content to share their land and grazing with what they call God's cattle. In the past, they sometimes killed a lion or rhino with these spears, but only as a sign of manhood and courage. Today, they still do it, but now it's more a show of resentment or frustration against the wildlife authorities with whom they've had a 20-year dispute. It would not be fair to say that the Maasai are just another problem for Amboseli. It's the Maasai that have the problem, reconciling their way of life to an Amboseli that has been taken over by conservationists. The Maasai have agreed to move out of the central area of Amboseli and leave it to the wild animals and the tourists. In exchange, they have been given alternative water supplies and a share in the revenues from tourism. They know that in this small area, visitors will be far more profitable than cattle. But though they are practical, they are unlikely to alter their way of life or change their cattle for tourist buses. The Maasai are unique in the way they grasp the realities of the 20th century, yet make so few concessions to it. <laughs> For the Maasai, the highlight of their balloon ride was not the joys of aviation, but the thrill of being able to watch their beloved herds of cattle from the air. <laughs> Ah, 
kuji na kamata sisi. Bora mo ngayo. Bora mo ngayo. Bora mo ngayo. In a world that values change for its own sake, the Maasai and the balloon are similar anachronisms. Science could make them more efficient, but tradition gives them their unchanging grace and beauty. While the roots were working in Amboseli, the area was finally given the status of a full national park and taken over by a young Kenyan warden. Relations with the Maasai improved, and Amboseli now has a more peaceful future, one that it certainly deserves. time to go. We were very happy with our balloon. It was a great way of filming animals and a magical way of seeing our beloved Africa. Every flight was a feast for the senses, but one flight was to overshadow them all. Whenever you move camp in Africa, you leave part of yourself behind, so packing up is usually a sad occasion. But somehow this time, we knew we would be back before too long. We knew there was still one thing we had to do. Kilimanjaro, around whose feet we had been floating for so long, is the highest point in Africa. Any balloonist worth his basket would want to look down on that point. We'd have to go to over 20,000 feet, seldom done in a hot air balloon. We'd need oxygen and special clothing. We'd have to do trials and get weather reports, and no doubt permission from all sorts of authorities. We soon found that under the surface glamour of a flight like this, there is a lot of painstaking work. Two months of work, to be exact. But when at last the great day dawned, the weather and the winds were just perfect. Hang on. Oh, got the bracket. So did I. Our flight above the mountain took four hours. We went to nearly 25,000 feet and covered 50 miles of forest, gorges, and glaciers. For Joan and I, and a balloon called Lengai, it was the ultimate adventure.
It's like the world's best roller coaster ride, only higher and faster. Seeing the world from the cockpit of a supersonic jet is an experience you won't soon forget. Wings put you there Wednesdays at 9 Eastern. Starts Friday, October 9th.